Welcome back to another Phantom Last of Day with me, Spency. So, <laughs> I mentioned last episode that I would be processing the video um, that I just recorded in between, like, while I'm recording this one, which I did. But I went through and I needed to clear out some information on my computer so I could so I had room to put it on because that hard drive was full AF. So, I started clearing out my old videos because I don't need those. I can watch them on the YouTubes. You kids can watch them on the, the SDs and the Playboys. Um, so, so I was clearing out that and no joke, it emptied about more than a fourth of the space on my hard drive, which is a huge amount of space. And it was just, I just got rid of the folder that I used to save videos into, like, way back in the day. And that all of my, um, I almost called them crop tops, my, um, what are they called? Screen captures? Not screen captures, that's not the right words. Oh, this one is bad to have during the this. Okay. Yeah, just during the, uh... What am I... What are they called? I faced that the wrong direction. Whoops. Screen captures. Just like pictures. Screen caps. Yeah, that's right. That's right, I think. I don't know how to internet. I died. <laughs> But yeah, I just got rid of that folder with all of the all of the pictures that I had saved of videos that I had made um, for different reasons for like making the uh, the sidebars and different things like that because Wii's do not take up the full screen. I don't think the Switch does either actually, um, but I'm not exactly sure. I don't have to worry about that right now because I'm just facing a camera at the screen. It was just that one, and it- a fourth, a fourth of the space, without exaggeration, it went from like 95% full to like, not that, it was- it went from like 90% to like 60%. <laughs> it was- it was a lot. It was a lot, that's all I had to say about that. And I know that's different from what I was- from the themes I was talking about last last episode, but like it is so much space. Um, if you haven't watched the last video that I posted, by the way, the other Cuphead video is what it is. Please do that. Um, I died again. I did not get as far as I got last time. If you haven't watched that, then please do. Um, I poured out my heart, soul, heart, and soul. I whoops. I poured out my heart and soul into that video, guys. It means so much. Um, you don't have to watch it if you do not wish to. I need to stop doing that. I did it again. I just need to learn his tells. All of these bosses have tells for when they're about to attack. His is he goes backwards into, like, a prep stance. Like, he ready. Like, there, there it was. I dropped a flaming light bulb onto him. I wonder how he feels about that. Probably not great, but who am I to judge clown emotions? I'm not clowning around anymore. <laughs> it had to be said. You know that it had to be said. It had to be said at some point. This, for the longest time... Okay. I was gonna get... Okay. <laughs> this, for the longest time, though, was my favorite. Um... Cuphead soundtrack. It might still be, but I've listened to it like a thousand times at this point. Like, I have listened to it often. I was trying to super him, but that's fine. Oh yeah, also in between episodes, I got my emotions back to normal. I blew my nose. It was a good time. I went from being not sick to continuing to be not sick. I feel exactly the same way I did when I was recording, just barely. Yes, I've switched into a British accent, a bad one, but still a British accent nonetheless. Um, 
that. <laughs> I honestly, guys, I have been having fun recording these videos. And like, <laughs> please check my Instagram. That photo shoot that I did yesterday, not yesterday, today. That was earlier today. That was at four o'clock. That was four hours ago. It wasn't even that long. Um, that was so fun, actually. <laughs> I, I've been having a good time while making these videos. Ooh, I didn't get hurt. I avoided it with my super sca skills. I was gonna mix superpowers and super skills, and I did it, and it worked successfully, and whew, I did that time, it did not work. And also, the Harry Potter episode where I just read Harry Potter. That is one of the funnest videos I have ever made. Don't ask me why, I don't actually love the first Harry Potter book. It's one of my least favorite Harry Potter books, if not my least favorite Harry Potter book. Um, but it, it was so flippin' fun! <laughs> I got to be sarcastic and have a good time, and I died. Not in that video, but in this one. <laughs> like, that was just a party. One of the reasons that I wanted to make the new Spellbird channel, it was, um, for those of you who weren't around before the age of Spellbird, um, it was math gaming which I wanted to do more than just gaming. So I made this channel and then basically stopped doing anything on it. I still did games, but nothing else. I have recorded a lot of things. I should not have gotten a hit right there, by the way, but that's okay. I'm just going to assume that it was because my controllers were below crotch level again. That generally does not bode well for actually using the controls, as I have discovered. I might need to- Oh, boo! That should not have made me get hit. Also, it feels like- It feels like the blasting is a lot shorter than it used to be. Um, I died again. But it feels like- It feels like they might have updated it and made the super a lot shorter. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right if I'm right. I would like confirmation either way. <laughs> There's that post online that's like, Murphy's Laws says that anything you say on the internet, the best or the best way to get information on the internet is to post something wrong and then get the and then people will correct you and give you the right information. Um, it's not actually Murphy's Law, it's oh I got hit by a thing that I didn't know was still a problem. Um, <laughs> it's like Cunningham's Law, I think it said. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was the idea of the post, and somebody proved that that lovely person right. Uh, I like being corrected, actually. A lot of people don't. But I find it enjoyable to be corrected, because it means that I... This knowledge that I didn't used to have, it's mine now. <laughs> I have conquered it. You have given it to me. By correcting me, you have made me right in more situations. Right as in correct. <laughs> like... So people always get, like, offended when they're corrected on things. I'm like, nah. As lo anything can be a learning experience. In this case, it is a learning experience because... That thing that I thought was right wasn't actually right, and now I know the truth. I don't have to lie to these people anymore. It's not a lie if you don't know the truth, actually, but you get what I mean. Ooh, it's a dangerous situation! <laughs> I'm scared! <laughs> I'm very, very scared! I knocked him out! Hey. <laughs> Were there two of me for a second? It looked like I was phased in front of myself. That might be wrong, though. 
that's just what it looked like. Under two minutes, under two minutes. Oh, just over. That's unsatisfying. Uh, B minus again? B! I'm not upset. Originally, for the first couple episodes, I was really upset at having anything lower than an A+. First couple episodes, I've done one episode. Anyways, um, <laughs> I was upset at having that be the case, but I'm just happy to be able to get through the levels anymore. I'm slowly regaining my stamina, being able to actually play the game. How many times have I died? I have died only 20 times? Holy crap! I've gotten to this point before and made it 200 times. Wow! I'm impressed with myself. Y'all don't have to be. 20 times for like five levels though. That's pretty good. That does not count the times that I got hit once and restarted though. Um, which if it did, it would be like 25 times. I haven't done that a ton. And I shall continue to not do it a ton because this level is really hard, but in the past, I've been generally okay with it. This is another song that I just really like, and I'm still going to talk over it because, like I said in the last episode, that's what YouTube is. Just talking over whatever you're doing. Or not talking. There are some silent YouTube videos. Some things can be really effective with having just... Oh. Um, <laughs> with having uh, just, like, music in the background, things like that. This level would be practically impossible without having um, the invisible dash. Oh, I got hit. I got a hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be really hard without the invisible dash. Okay, she's alive now and she's following me, but I have a super that I can use. Um, I'm doing... Wow! I have been hit once, and I am already on the final uh, stage. Now I've been hit twice, but that's beside the point. Oh, gosh. This is a dangerous zone! Oh, I'm scared for my life. <laughs> I knocked her out, though. Wow! I did that first try. If I didn't already get that achievement with Floral... Flor... Fl I can't words. Floral Fury. Floral Fury. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Floral Fury. Floral Fury. Floral Fury. Floral Fury. I can't do it. Did the first time. Gotta be. Minus. Ugh. That's upsetting. But, I... If I were to do it again... I would most certainly get higher than a B, because I did pretty good. I can, I can flaunt myself. That's not at all the right words, but we're just gonna pretend like I didn't say that. Also, what did the seal say? Um, also, the other guy is back here. Here he is. At last, I thought I'd never see another living soul again. I didn't even talk to those guys. I lost my way a while searching for my coins. No one has money for haircuts these days, thanks to that blasted casino. Well, I'd better get back to my pals in the quartet. Yes, let's see what they have to offer. Also, what is the upgrade that I got? Good timing, fellas. I just added an upgrade to your airplanes. Now you can wallop your foes with bombs. Just switch your weapon whenever it strikes your fancy. Oh, it's that thing. I forgot about that. I forgot that that existed. Um... Let's hear what this lovely quartet here has to sing about. Okay. They're barber poles! I've played this part so many times that I just realized that they're barber poles. I'm upset with myself. You, I, I did it for you. You don't get to be upset anymore. Wow. To do there's leaves to rake from the old banjo. You can practice your lady hop. And maybe later sing for your barber shop. Why not take a little quick break, then come back for more? 
Please come back for more. Please come back for more. Yep, I know that full song. I also know the full starting song. Once again, I own the soundtrack. I listen to it often. I have a jazz album. I would say it's strangely fitting for today, but I did this on purpose. I did this to myself with intent. Because <laughs> once again, today is jazz day. Tomorrow is tropical day. It's going to be a real fun day for tropical day. I actually do have something planned. I did have something else planned for today, but I never got to it. I did get to it, but I accidentally recorded it with my phone. Um, not the right direction. So that was fun. That was a good time. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so that that's a video you never get to see. It was me playing piano again. Just as an easy and simple explanation of what it was. Easy and simple mean basically the same thing. I guess not really. You can have uh, over easy. You you don't you're not gonna say over simple um, for A's. I want eggs. I should make eggs for breakfast tomorrow. Actually, what is something tropical I could have for breakfast tomorrow? I could have a smoothie. I don't have any fruit to make smoothies, but I could have a smoothie. I think I'll have a smoothie for breakfast tomorrow. Maybe even if I don't make it, like, I'll go to the place that I work and get it, because we also make smoothies. We make pretty dang good smoothies that are pretty dang good. Um, <laughs> advertisement without saying what the place is. Nice. <laughs> I died again at basically the exact same spot. I'm going to claim that it's because I got a text message, though. Um, yeah, I got a text message telling me to sleep well. I'm not sleeping right now. I'm recording this at 8.30. <laughs> if you're watching this person who sent me that and you know who you are <laughs> go to bed <laughs> at reasonable times I'm not judging you but 8.30 is not the time that most people go to bed just saying <laughs> you're still an amazing person Go to bed at 10, <laughs> unless you wake up at like 4 in the morning. Actually, unless you wake up at exactly 4 in the morning, because that, 4 in the morning, how many hours of sleep is that? 8, 4, yeah, that's 8 hours of sleep exactly. So, unless you go wake up at 4 in the morning, or if you're a teenager, which I don't know if you still fit in this age range, singular person that I'm talking to, um... <laughs> I don't know what, uh, hmm. I know that teenagers require somewhere between 9 and 10 hours of sleep each night, which is averaged at 9 and a half for most cases. I don't know what time the teenage, or what um, age the teenage years technically end at. Because adults and children need, okay, this one is a hard one to survive. Oh, I hit the... I should not have gotten hit. I pushed that button before I got hit. I purposely ran into him. Like, actually, though. But, you know what happens when the controller goes below crotch level? <laughs> Every time. Oh, I almost did it again. I parried. Parry the platypus. Oh, I did it again. I wasn't expecting that one to be a parried one, but it was. Oh... I phased him and he killed me. It's okay. Everything is okay. Oh, I didn't finish what I was saying. Um, <laughs> I have a problem with doing that. It's something that should probably be fixed, but whatever. Um, where I, I start saying things and then I get distracted and stop saying those things. I have been told by ADHD people that I probably have ADHD, but I've never been to a therapist or mental health professional of any sort, so I don't actually know. 
The closest I've been is taking online quizzes, and those tell me that I have all of the things. <laughs> Which I might. I'm not going to say that's incorrect. But I- oh, I thought he was gonna poof before then. And might just have every single mental illness known to man. I did not mean to do that, but I'm happy that I did anyways. There's not really a reason to save the booms. I don't know what else to call them. Also, this background does not look like it was hand animated. It looks like it was made into a model and then recorded with a camera. Stop! <laughs> Stop! I got hit again. Everything is okay, though. I haven't spent as long as this level getting as far as I have as I have in the past. That was a lot of words to say, not a lot of things. Basically, um, I've gotten shorter in more time, is the simplified version. It is already the first- I need to keep the controller above crotch level. <laughs> That is the thing that is making me get hit very often. That part was just me being me. And the propeller happening to hit the exact right spot. Okay, keeping my controllers above my crotch. And we'll see how well this goes. I already should have gotten hit three times already. Like, without, um, exaggeration, I should have gotten hit that many times already. Hey, hey. What if that just automatically did it? Haha. -ha. Um, like, when I, when I, um, did the bomb on him immediately as he was transitioning, like, if it ended the phase right then and there. Oh, I should have gotten hit there. It's okay. Okay. One HP to the point that I, that's before the part that I usually get 1 HP at, I need to focus more, but also I can't focus more because I'm making a YouTube video. I would claim that YouTube videos lower my concentration, but they really don't. They don't lower it any more than they, than it is lowered normally. I can still focus on talking and doing other things at the same time. Not talking and writing. That is something that is very difficult, as I have discovered through my creative writing class. But, I also write creatively all the time on my own. I have a boom! Boom boom, baby! <laughs> okay, we just need to avoid the things. Which, again, is the name of the game. Is avoiding things. It's, an... <laughs> it's the name of my life. I forgot to delete videos on the camera in between recordings. So this is probably... Okay. <laughs> this is probably going to split itself into like three different videos, which is upsetting to me. I would not like that to be the case. I would like to not edit at all. But I have to produce it when that happens. Because... It leads to unsatisfying things. I don't like the cats, but I like it more than I like them more than the jewelry. Okay, so when I talk about things other than the game, then I do better. So I'm just gonna stop talking about the game that I'm playing. This is basically just a podcast while also I'm playing Cuphead. So how are you guys doing? <laughs> um, don't answer that. I'm not Dora the Explorer. <laughs> I'm really excited for the theme weeks. I've probably said this a thousand times over at this point, but I'm excited for these theme weeks. Because they... okay. Because they really give a chance to just let people show their creative energy. If... For people who haven't been looking at my Instagram, let me give you a brief description of the theme weeks. I just realized that there might be people who aren't on Instagram who watch these videos. The theme weeks, of which I am doing, is I am assigning a theme to each day for the next three weeks, and then dressing up as that theme, and doing the things that relate to that theme that I can. 
So today I'm play I'm dressed in 1920s theme, um, which I decided a few days ago. I'm dressed in 1920s theme, and I am playing a game that is based technically in the 1930s, but it's like still the same type of animation and jazz. Actually, I don't know if any animation existed back then, but whatever. <laughs> don't worry about it. Still 1930s animation, close enough to the 20s. And jazz, jazz is flippin' timeless, but it started in the 1920s with the roaring 20s and the prohibition of alcohol. I actually know, not to toot my own horn, but I actually know a lot about jazz. <laughs> um, because I am in jazz band and I am also in several other band classes at my school. So I get to hear the jazz lesson multiple times, both in that class and also when we do our music history unit. Oh, that was a pointless hit. I shouldn't have gotten a hit there. <laughs> my bad. So, I might as well give, like, a jazz history lesson, because I know there are some people who don't get that all the time. So basically, jazz started... Yep, that's right, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> jazz started in the early 1920s. I believe it was the year 1920 that jazz, like, technically started. And it started based off of a set of vocal traditions that were in African American culture, um, not necessarily African, but like slave songs. Um, how a lot of uh, a lot of black people would get together in a central square on Sundays, where they were allowed to basically. It was basically a free period of slave enslavement. <laughs> um, so they got together in a place called Congo Square, where they, um, I hear my dog, hello Lucy, where they would get together and sing and dance and have real cool parties that I think it would have been really interesting to be a part of. I'm sure I would not be accepted because I am white, but also I might be accepted because I am not racist. <laughs> <laughs> so, they would get together and dance and have these loose vocal traditions, which is where things like grace notes and falls uh, and things happen in jazz is because it was based off of vocal tradition. And that's where a lot of the blues came from, is it came from those slaves as well, um, who got together on Congo Square. So that, that was the earliest version of jazz that we know about, but we also, the 1920s, I believe that was like way before the 1920s. The 1920s were a great year for the progression of jazz and New Orleans, which is where they started, were a great place for them to start in because it was just a mixture of all of these cultures. So like you would have African communities getting together, white communities getting together, um, in a lot of cases Spanish communities getting together. That's why you sometimes hear Latin jazz is because um, New Orleans was a trade port so a lot of these different cultures could get together and just just create, which I think is amazing that that this can happen anywhere. Um, not I'm not trying to get political or anything, but this I don't think really has happened to the same extent ever since. One might be able to claim disco, but disco hasn't survived. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but like the day that disco was, oh, I tried to dash, but I dashed in the wrong direction. Um, 
the day the disco died where they put all the records in the middle of the field and pretty much lit them on fire. I'm sorry, guys. You haven't even seen the fourth phase yet. Anyways. Um, I'm sorry, but moving on with this discussion of just me, which is officially called a lecture. Um, all of these people would get together and just create jazz. Um, one of the earliest people who did jazz was Ferdinand Lamoth, who I believe he had another nickname, but I don't remember what it was. And he was just one of the people who was known as being a really good trumpet player um, back, I think, in the late 1910s, actually. Um, not even into the 20s at this point. And then, no, Ferdinand Lamoth was... Okay, you might have to check, fact check me at this point. I believe it was Ferdinand Lamoth, but that might also be Jelly Roll Morton, which was also in the late 10s, but, um, the late 1910s, that is. We're to a point where I can't just say the 10s and people will get what I say because we're in 1920 now. Not 1920, we're in 2020 now. <laughs> 1910s, Jelly Roll Morton was one of the first people who notated jazz, as in he wrote down the music for it, and like, found ways to write down the music for it. So, um, he wrote down like swing rhythms and all, all this type of stuff. He was a piano player, by the way. Don't need to know that, but I'm telling you anyways. And he transitioned, I believe, from the ragtime, from doing ragtime to doing jazz, which ragtime is very similar to jazz. Um, it's actually not swung, but it's piano pieces where they would take popular pieces and then rag them, which is basically just play them really upbeat on piano, and they would do these in, um, they would do these in different like bars and clubs and things that they had back then. Um, and the main, the main ragtime person that you have probably heard of, he's famous enough, is Scott Joplin. He wrote The Entertainer and Maple Leaf Rag and a whole bunch of others. Um, so he definitely did not die in, like, unknown, being unknown, that is. So that's where, um, Jelly Roll Morton originated from, and he was, again, one of the first people who notated jazz into sheet music like we see today. Um, other things were notated into sheet music, but jazz wasn't, just because it was so freeform. And that's one of the things that sets jazz apart from everything else, is there are... It is more freeform in that it has improv solos and things like that. I know a lot of you probably know improv from, like, acting, um, how you can do acting improv. I am in an improv club myself. Um, oops. <laughs> yeah, I'm in an improv club myself in my school. Ooh, this is bad news for me, but I'm still hitting him, and everything is okay. Oh, those can hit me. I thought those were just trans- Oh, that's really close. Okay, I can do it this time. What was I even saying? Oh, yeah, you do improv and jazz, which is where you hear a lot of these solos that you can hear um, in this music, specifically, is improv solos where they play a melody- They create a melody on the spot. Um, you hear it in solo instruments. They create a melody on the spot- I'm just gonna retry that. <laughs> um, often without having it written out beforehand, although that's that has changed a little bit today. How, in a lot of, um, if if somebody is playing something like famous, then it'll often have the solo written out, or if it's less advanced, then it'll have the solo written out, but in, like, classic jazz, you never wrote out the solos that people would have, um, that they played as improv, and it often passes in between different instruments. 
the king of improv, kind of, is Louis Armstrong, actually. He really emphasized improv and kind of added that into jazz. Louis Armstrong, you know of him. He's he's the one who I can't do a good Im imitation of him. He, he has a gravelly voice and kind of sounds like that. Um, he sings, Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. And, um song. Um, he died in the 70s, which is sad, but a lot of these, a lot of these jazz, early jazz artists died of drug use, like prolonged drug use. So you feel bad for them, and you're sad that they're gone, but like, oh, that was a hundred years ago at this point. <laughs> he, yeah, he, Louis Armstrong gained his jazz skills from um, actually Juvie Jail, <laughs> believe it or not, and his earliest cornet teacher was, um, what's his name? It's King something, King, it's either King something or Duke something, um, I don't remember specifically what it was, but he does, that's what, that's who Louis Armstrong learned from, basically. And then he started doing these solo things, solo jazz, and he really helped evolve it into this more improv-based thing. Um, I already got hit again. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> what else can be said about jazz? A lot can be said about jazz, but that's, that's like the basics of how it started, at least. Um, of course, it kept on progressing. Um, it's not at all the same as it was back then. There are a lot of big names that you need to know, like Duke Ellington. Um, he played piano. He he did really well. Then there was um, there was Benny Goodman, who played a lot of clarinet in jazz. Um, he oof. His band was the one who made Sing Sing Sing, if you've ever heard it. If you want to listen to some modern day jazz, um, actually, there's a band called 8-Bit Big Band who do video game music turned into jazz. And one of my favorite songs of theirs is they made a Luigi's Mansion version of Sing 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 and it's just really it's really good um, they all are really good at playing their instruments which is common for professional groups, they are professionals but yeah, it's really good it's based off of not only Luigi's Mansion, but Sing Sing Sing. Um, there's just a little bit of sing sing sing. It's like a ten minute long song, and it goes into a thousand different melodies. But I love it so. Um, so yeah, that one is again one made by um, I almost said Kenny G. It is. Benny Goodman, which starts with G, and it is similar, um, the last name starts with G, that is. I know that Kenny G has a lot- I did it! <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, so we made that. It was good. Um, and then later in the 1930s, which is this era that we're looking at right here, um, you'll see the soul conch- oh, two minutes and one second. I probably got a B minus? B. B! Nice! 
Um, you'll see it in the sole contract. I believe it says copyright um, 1930, which is a little reference there to the animation that this is based off of. But around the 1930s, um, oh, my voice is coming out. You can probably hear it. I can feel it. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> um, oh, it doesn't say it there. It says it somewhere. Uh, where is it? Is it the list? Yeah, copyright 1930 down in the bottom left corner. Um, where should I go next? I wonder. Let's go... Not to another flying level. Let's go here, shall we? Funfair Fever. And that's another mouthful to try to say quickly. Funfair Fever, Funfair Fever, Funfair Fever, Funfair Fever, Funfair Fever. <laughs> Anyways, in the 1930s... Sorry, I keep on getting distracted. That's who I am, though. In the 1930s, um, Glenn Miller came around, which is right near the start of... Oh, it's actually best for me to not have my gun going right now, because these guys are not the nicest crew. Glenn Miller... Oh, that was bad. <laughs> Glenn Miller came around, and he actually... He did a lot of the ones that you... He did probably most of the ones that you've heard. Um, and that's partially because they were really good, partially because, um, he was white and people be racist. Um, <laughs> but he, he is, I believe, the number one selling musical artist to this day, I believe. Um, he made the equivalent of millions of dollars a week. Which is insane, first of all. Second of all, he was a really good artist. He made, um... He made You've Heard of In the Mood. Um... It... That's the one. Oh, I got hit. Whoops. I almost got hit again. I did get hit again. Yeah, he made that song. He also made Moonlight Serenade, which, if you know me and go to my school, or don't go to my school and know which school I go to, that is actually an event that we host. Um, it's usually every April, but because of unnamed sickness, um, it's going to be in May this year. It was already scheduled to be in April, but then all of this happened, and it was no longer scheduled to be in April, because we're not supposed to have gatherings of over... people. <laughs> we can have gatherings of person, not of people, which at that point is not a gathering. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you know which school I go to, and know of an event, or know of an event called Moonlight Serenade in your local area, look into it. Um, you can find tickets online. Oh gosh. You can find tickets to it online. Um, it's pretty cool. It's just a place where we get together, play jazz. Um, there are some Moonlight singers as well. That's why I didn't have my gun on. Um, <laughs> There are some Moonlight Singers, which I was going to audition for, but I... Eh. I'm upset. <laughs> it's fine, though, because I am... I didn't because I'm lead trumpet in the band, which is one of the reasons why I didn't. I also didn't because first semester there were only four trumpets in our band, and it destroys anybody's lips to play that much in one night. Um... Much less to not have, like, a replacement to switch you off, kind of. Um, so yeah, we only had four trumpets. Now we have nine. <laughs> so I'm a bit upset that I didn't audition for that singing group. And then 
I talked to my director afterward and was like, hey, what if I still sang even though I didn't audition? And he basically turned me down and it's fine. So I shall not sing at Moonlight Serenade this year unless somebody happens to drop out and I know the song perfectly, which there is a high chance of. Anyways, that whole rant started because I was talking about Glenn Miller, who wrote the song Moonlight Serenade. Da 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 is Moonlight Serenade. This one actually has words. It's I stand at your gate and the song that I sing is of moonlight. I stand and I wait for the touch of your lips in the June light. The roses are singing a moonlight serenade. Yes, I sing. Not well. <laughs> Especially when my voice is dying, but I still... I do a lot of things, if you haven't noticed. I play piano, I play trumpet, I play clarinet. You'll see tomorrow that I play another instrument. Also not well, but that's beside the point. <laughs> um... <laughs> so... I also sing, and I also act, and I also draw, and I also... <laughs> write, and I also... I'm a jack of all trades, and I consider myself at least pretty good at most of the things. I'm not great at drawing, which is fun because that's what I want to do in the future. I like doing things to get better at doing things. Um, I really like learning. Not the way that a lot of schools do it, though. I need to just not fire right at the start. I can probably do this one as a pacifist route. It would actually probably be easier to do it as a pacifist route. For this one specifically, but not for like any of the other running gun ones. Um, I can let's let's find out. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not going to the end of the level with one HP. So Glenn Miller wrote um Moonlight Serenade, the song Moonlight Serenade. And then him being the most famous composer in history, he decided, you know what? I'm gonna go to war. So, him being an, the amazing person that he was, he fought in World War II. Um, he didn't fight in World War II, but he... Hmm, I was gonna say something, but then I realized it's not technically true. Um, he... Okay, well. From what we know, um... He and his band were, like, the official military band, and they played marches. He actually wrote a march. I think it was only one, though. Um, just one march, not multiple. He's not, like, John Philip Sousa at all. Um, which, if you don't know who that is, wrote a bunch of marches, wrote the national march. Um, um, John Philip Sousa wrote that one. Um, kind of beside the point is he to this conversation. Um, Glenn Miller wrote a march. I was gonna die there anyways. There was no way I could make it past that without taking damage. Okay, so we're gonna gun. <laughs> but Glenn Miller um, was the leader of this military band after World War II started, and he decided one day to go in a different plane from the rest of his band. Um, 
one day just so he could reach somewhere a little bit earlier than them. Um, he didn't have to worry about transporting equipment and all that. From... We don't know what happened to him after that. He died overseas, over the English Channel, and he is still reported as missing in action. So, from what we know, it might have been friendly fire, it might have been that his plane was flying below other planes who were at a higher altitude who, to lose some weight, were dropping bombs into the ocean. He might have been bombed by the U.S., um, which isn't something to laugh about, but I laugh about everything. Y'all should know that by now. Um, even if it's not funny. Um, so yeah, he was reported as missing in action, which is sad. And this guy named Tex Beneke, who was a saxophone player for Glenn Miller, took over his band and turned it into the Tex Beneke Band. Um, it wasn't as popular, but it was still decently popular at least. Um, they actually make reference to him in the song Chattanooga Choo Choo, um, which I know don't all jazz songs have great names. Um, <laughs> they reference to them with the line, hey there Tex, now what you say, step aside partners, it's my day. That's a reference to Tex Beneke and it's actually in the original recording him singing it. Um, which I think is pretty great. He was a really good saxophone player. He gave, um, possibly the most famous solo, saxophone solo in, um, I think it was in, in The Mood. And he's good. He was good. Um, after, after the Tex Beneke band kind of lost popularity, um, it transitioned back over to the Glenn Miller, the Glenn Miller Orchestra, is what it was called. And that actually, that same orchestra actually still exists to this day. Um, I haven't seen a lot about them. They are definitely not as popular as Glenn Miller originally was. But they do still exist. Like, his original band, of course it has completely different people in it, but his original band um, still exists to this day. I don't know where, I don't know um, if they have any performances that you guys should look out for. I'm sure they're great still. Um, that's a band that I don't know a lot about. I realized just barely that I'm not actually... I'm only talking about, like, famous jazz players and composers. There was also... I did it. Um, there were also some people who didn't fit under that description, like, um... Ella... Uh, Ella Fitzgerald. She is one of the... She is probably the most famous jazz singer before like, of the early 1920s. Um, she sang a lot of, a lot of songs. She sang Orange Color Sky, Blue Sky, um, those ones are... I was walking along, minding my business, when I have an orange colored sky, flash, bam, alakazam, wonderful you came by. I was humming a tune, drinking in sunshine, when out of that orange colored view, wham, bam, alakazam, I got a look at you. One look and I yell, Timber, watch out for flying glass, cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out, I went into a spin and I started to shout, I've been hit, this is it, this is it. I was walking along, minding my business, when love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam, out an orange colored sky. I honestly forgot that I was singing for a second. My brain went on autopilot as I was saying. That one is orange colored sky, obviously. 
the other one that I mentioned, Blue Skies, it's not as fun of the singing part as it is a playing part. It starts out with the trumpets with da 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 Blue skies, da 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 Talk about blue skies, do I see? Da 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 There's this part where the trumpets go up to like high Ds, which are high. Um, I couldn't play them until, um, last physical year, not last school year, but last year year. Um, and that part, da 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 that's still not the right part. Anyways, she was a cool person who sang a lot of jazz songs, and you probably know her by voice of some famous things that she saying. Um, the thing about jazz, though, is it didn't end with either the swing- he just shot that backwards- with either the swing era or the big band era. Um, it's actually- it's kind of everything now. Um, it stopped progressing for the most part at the moment, unless you count, like, what is it even called? Progressive jazz? Um, which has, like, violins, and I don't like it, <laughs> if you can't tell by my tone of voice. I also don't like cool jazz. Um, and you can't really tell anything by the tone of my voice, because my voice is dying from talking for almost two hours straight. Um, there's also bebop jazz with Miles Davis. He could play really high, really loud. Um, he was a trumpet player, of course. <laughs> That's why I referenced him being able to play high and loud. It's not really an accomplishment on any other instrument but trumpet. I guess trombone maybe, but they, they more care about playing low. That's why there's a fourth trombone, with it, which is a bass trombone. I'll probably just get to the end of this level and then end this video off here. Um, then there's... I just mentioned bebop, actually. Bebop! A lot of people don't like bebop. I really do. <laughs> um, just because... I don't know if this would technically be con I don't think this would technically be considered bebop. Actually, it might be. This song specifically might be bebop. Um, where it has really fast, really difficult solos that, like, you can't dance to. One of the characteristics of jazz is that it's really good to dance along to. Um, you've, you've probably heard a lot of the older songs that are just super easy to dance to. Um, that's where the dance The Charleston came from. Um, and that's where Swing Dance came from, of course. Swing Dance is so fun, by the way. By the way, I also like dancing. Um, <laughs> it's really fun, but Bebop, you can't really dance along to it. Um, it has really fast, hard, and complex solos that, like, you can't... It's also really hard to replicate them. It is one of the most intense forms of jazz. Um, you hear a lot of it in the movie La La Land in a lot of the montages and things, where it's just kind of them playing. 
told you guys I knew a lot about jazz. I've talked for like 45 minutes about jazz exclusively. Not exclusively, not even close to exclusively. I get distracted so easily. <laughs> I already got hit. I'm just gonna retry that. Um, there was also another singer is Frank Sinatra. Um, you've probably heard some things by him. He sang, come fly with me, come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Even if you have heard them and heard him in the modern day, you might not know that it's him um, because of Michael Buble. He, Michael Buble, when he first went in, um, Michael Buble is really cool, by the way. I like him. His main goal was to popularize old jazz while also creating new things um, on his own just so he wouldn't be considered like a cover band and how he would become his own artist, um, which he definitely did. Like, Feeling Good, one of my favorite songs ever. I can listen to that song as many as many times as humanly possible, and I will not get tired of it. I love that song. Which, I know you know what that one is, but I'm gonna sing it anyways. It's the, hey, hey I'm ahead of schedule. That, that part generally starts playing right when I get this guy to hatch. Ooh, that was a close one. Oh, that wasn't a close one. That was a hit. Uh, feeling good though is birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Da 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 dum da dum, I'm feeling good. Da 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 da. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossoms on a tree, oh oops, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good. And the stars where you shine, you know how I feel. Scent of the pine, you know how I feel. Oh, freedom is a mine. I would belt, but other people are home, obviously. Freedom is a mine, and I know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. For me, and I'm feeling good. Um, so yeah, Mike Buble, when he first went in to get signed to a label, or at least that was his goal, to get signed to a label, is the, uh, the guy who was like, I don't know, auditioning him, I don't know technical musical terms because I don't listen to the radio most of the time, I listen to old songs. When he went in, though, to get signed to a label, um, the guy who was auditioning him told him that he sounded a lot like Frank Sinatra and that why should he hire just another Frank Sinatra? We already have Frank Sinatra. And Michael Buble said, with all due respect, he's dead. <laughs> um, and he got signed to the label. And he's been pretty successful with being able to show people jazz while, um, show people jazz while, old jazz while also creating his own. So he's a pretty cool guy. I kind of don't have a lot else to say about jazz. Um, yes, obviously it has gone into, like, Dixieland and cool jazz, but... I prefer big band swing and bebop. <laughs> Those are the main two that I like. They're fun to play, fun to listen to. Swing dancing is really fun though. Last year at this Moonlight Serenade that I was telling you about earlier, um, every night for the last song, 
um, which was Hey Pachuca, which is similar to Sing 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 that I was singing earlier, but not quite. Um, how does that one even go? I can't think of it. Um, it'll come to me in a minute. Um, but every night while the rest of the band would be playing that song, I would be swing dancing because it was super fun and it was super tiring and it basically killed me, but it was a really good time. <laughs> I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Um... Let's see, what else happened? <laughs> what else happened as a result of jazz? Could ex ex start explaining jazz theory, like how jazz works. Oof, oof, that's real close to my body. I've made it past this phase, but only slightly. I've never actually beaten this game. Um, that there was big oh, I died. I felt my chair vibrate though, and I also. I got TikTok recently. It's a problem. <laughs> I'm already kind of addicted, so I'm trying to spend not a ton of time on it. I didn't want to get it because I knew that I would become addicted to it, because it's just fun. I like having funny videos and creative videos of people. I already watched Thomas Sanders and TikTok compilations, which I guess was already part of the problem. I guess that's true. I will no longer see all of one thing anymore, where compilations would be like, TikTok compilation of this specific person or this specific topic. Um, and that won't be a problem now that I actually have the app. I haven't posted anything. I've had ideas to post um, things since before I got the app, but I just haven't. Um, because I don't really care about that. I like posting full-length videos, several hour-long videos of me playing Cuphead instead of several tiny, um, several very short videos of <laughs> me trying to be funny. Emphasis on trying. <laughs> Actually, we play apples to apples. Last time I played apples to apples, um, we played it the way that I normally play it, which is every green card that you get, like every card that you win, um, is a description of who you are. Last time I played it, I played it with a group of friends, many of which are probably watching this video. Um, maybe, if anybody watches this video. It is kind of an hour long, and I don't know if anybody has that sort of commitment. I don't, I just don't want to edit all of these things and spend way longer than a single day on the 1920s. Yes, the 1920s are great, but I also would like to move on to other things. This video is not ending until I finish this fight, by the way. I would be lying if I said I haven't had this much trouble with this guy in the past. I have had a lot of trouble with this guy every time I've played him. And that's especially weird. I guess it's like, I'm, I'm killing my family member. He is a bird, I'm a bird. Um, I don't like killing family members. <laughs> Not that I have a lot of points of reference, just saying. It's not something that's gen- oh, come on. <laughs> Controller blue, crotch level again. Um, it's not something that I generally spend my free time doing. Especially on a Friday night. It is Friday. I have forgotten what day of week it is. Because of this not being in school thing, this whole- you sick thing. Haha, -ha, I'm ahead of schedule this time. Last time I was not ahead of schedule. Again, I've had it before where this guy turn it turns to this phase like right as this guy pops out of the egg. Are eggs basically bird booms? Anyways. 
I've been binge watching Adventure Time lately, and I swear this is going somewhere. I've been binge watching Adventure Time. I'm almost near the end, and I got it a couple weeks ago. My favorite line I heard earlier today. <laughs> what even was it? <laughs> I'm trying to think of it now. It was something like, I ain't no dome baby, I'm a baby of the womb. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't know why, but I just really liked that line. I guess I could kind of relate to it. Um, not because I was birthed from my father's head, but because I was a C-section. <laughs> By the way, um, I was untimely ripped from my mother's womb. Every time I think of that, I have to think of Macbeth. Um, <laughs> Because that's the perfect thing to think about at random times of the day when you're thinking about your birth. I apparently had a very traumatic birth experience. <laughs> yep, I'm going into this right now. <laughs> um, I was a traumatic child. Not because of who I was as a child, but because of who I was becoming a child. I got hit again and that's no good. Um, my mother has tried to actively forget my birth. <laughs> not because, again, not because I was a bad child, but because it was a bad experience getting me to that point. <laughs> I had a good time, though. I was born. I'm here today to speak of it. Okay, this is fine. Oh, I'm deciding to do the sick jukes. More, I don't really care about getting getting a good grade on this, I just care about completing it. Which I really wish I had that mentality with school. Oh, it's... I guarantee it's so close to the next phase. Haha, -ha, I told you so. Okay, move to that. Just avoid the pills. Avoid the pills, which is a general rule of thumb, I think. Okay, if I stay generally right here... I should be fine. Oh, oh, I'm so close! No! <laughs> Please tell me I wasn't that close. Okay, I was half through, halfway through that phase. But, I proved that I can do it, so I can do it again. Oh, this video's been going on for an hour and a quarter. I hate that. I hate that, that I just said that. Nope. <laughs> It's not going to be a good run if I get hit immediately. I have progressed into just singing the music. I no longer have commentary. Only music. Only song. The song of my heart. Actually, I didn't write it, so it's the song of somebody else's heart. So, two videos that I was planning on doing today that I might still record and just upload on a later date. Um, I was planning for today to write a jazz song, because yes, I also write music. We need a compilation of all of the times I've said that I do things in this video. I had a random hiccup again. We just need a compilation of all of those times, because it's been a lot of times. Um, I also write music. I mainly write piano music, but I've been trying to get into other music because it's more complicated and I like learning new things that I like learning about. It's a little bit self-explanatory, but it also makes sense. I like most subjects. I just got hit twice. That is not good. At least I can parry. Oh, come on. That one was... That one was legitimately not my fault. The controller was below crotch level again. <laughs> don't ask me why it keeps on going down there. I just don't like holding up my arms. <laughs> I like resting my hands on my lap. Um, what if I just stop talking? <laughs> what if I discontinued speech. 
and just let myself be silent while playing this. I would have to edit it a little bit, but not a lot of it. Um, of course, if I did that, then that would be the exact time that I beat it, and y'all would not think I was telling the truth at that point. Oh. I bopped him to... Oh, soon. <laughs> okay, this is fine. This is fine. We got it this time. We have got this in the flippin' bag. Uh, if you enjoy this video, I will say, please watch my other videos. I like making them and producing them. Not so much producing them, but I like making them. I like recording them. Editing them is alright if I do interesting things with it. I'm in danger. <laughs> oh. I'm s I keep on getting so close. I knew it was gonna happen right then. Oh, I'm not even that close. I was halfway through that phase. Oh, this saddens me and it pains me. I'm sorry that this is going to be such a long episode. Also, I'm sorry, I just realized that the camera is crooked. Nope. Let's fix it. After all of this time that y'all have had to watch it. Also, it goes out of focus every time the TV goes black still. It's real unfortunate. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go silent. I'm done with commentary for a minute. I'm just gonna go silent until I beat this level. I'm gonna keep recording. So if it's this time that I beat it, then I just won't stop recording and it'll be silent and cool. Okay, silence starting now. Mm, no! I admit that it would be funny. I really don't want to have to do a death montage right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was about ready to give up. I rage quit once on this channel a single time. I was not happy to make it the second. Two, two, two. Good even twos. Oh, probably got like a C. B minus. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Give you an explanation of how much I cut out of that boss fight. I have been recording for an hour and a half. It's a two minute boss fight. You can do your own math there. I'm done. I will see you tomorrow. Maybe today if I, I am uploading this video before any videos happen tomorrow. I am uploading this video. You are seeing it right now. Okay. <laughs>
to you tomorrow or later today, depending on when this is actually uploaded. Goodbye. <laughs>